Today we are taking a look at the hill that has produced top Olympians such as Lindsey Vaughn, Christina Kosnick, and more recently Paula Moulton. And of course we're talking about Buck Hill. So let's jump on over to the desk so you can ski along. Alrighty, so Buck Hill, this is a ski resort that I have skied quite a bit and is actually one of my go-tos just because it's a local ski area for me and it's less than 40 minutes away. Let's start with some basic information here. So just to let you know, all of this POV footage that we shot was from December 10th of 2022, which happened to be a Saturday and is a little bit early in the season. That's why we don't have footage of in the POVs of things like the moguls, the full park setups, and the half pipe. So we'll show you some older B-roll that we have of that just so you can get a reference point and I would say the crowds are relatively light on a day like this. Buck Hill can get crowded on weekends so something just to be aware of. Uh, they're located in Burnsville, Minnesota which for those that don't know is about maybe 20 minutes south of the Twin Cities and it's very very urban this ski resort actually there's houses kind of almost surrounding the entire ski area if you look at some of this drone footage that we're going to put up on screen here. So let's talk about hours and dates. They typically open for the season around the end of November so anywhere around the Thanksgiving holiday and then they usually close about the second or third week into March, sometimes a little bit later, just kind of depends on the weather situation. Their weekday hours are typically 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and their weekend and holiday hours go from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. They do have some reduced hours, uh, early season and sometimes late season, so always just check the website as you know we move into some of those periods as well. Price for tickets, looking on the website here, you can see an adult on a weekday. If you buy it online, you save $10 and it is $39. If you go on site, it's gonna be 49, child is 44 and 34 online. They do have a senior and military discount and then they do have an early bird special, which I actually recommend because um, two hours at skiing at Buck Hill is, is a good amount. I think it's a pretty solid amount of time. And uh, 10 a.m. To, to noon is just $20 online, 30 on site. And then they also have a late night, which same thing, you know, two hours is adequate to get some good turns in at this hill and, and ski pretty much everything they have to offer. And that's from seven to nine on site 30 and uh, $20 online. If we move to the weekend hours on site uh, 59 for their regular adult rate, 49 if you buy online, child 49 on site, 39 online. And then once again, they have those discounted rates for late night and late night plus for those. So those are great deals if you're just looking to get out. $25 for the seven to nine. From three to nine, it's 39 if you buy it online. Moral of the story here is you're gonna get a much better price if you buy your tickets online. Not only that, but it is going to save you time in the ticketing office. Buck Hill also offers lessons, private and group lessons as well. We're gonna put some of that information on screen just so you can see that. If you have any questions about their lesson packages, feel free to reach out to their ski school. Rentals are as follows, on site $40 for skis, $35 if you buy online, and same with snowboards, and then helmets are $15 on site and $10 online. Number of trails, they technically have 16 trails. We're gonna look at most of those uh, as we ski through them today. Number of lifts, they have three chair lifts, three rope toes, and two magic carpets. And then they also have a tubing carpet, which obviously we don't really count. Vertical rise, we always use Google Earth for this just because it's a little bit more accurate. And I was coming up with about 255 feet of vertical drop, which actually is pretty close to what they say on their website. I think it, they say like 260 something, 267. All right, well, without further ado, let's uh, jump right on into our ski along today. So the first thing that we are gonna start with is the magic carpet. And this one is Oh my gosh, this is uh, by, by far one of my favorite surface lifts in the Midwest. When it was installed back in 2008, it was the longest magic carpet in the country. That title has been since claimed, I think, by Ute in Utah, but it's nearly 800 feet long. Uh, kids love it because you go through a covered tunnel, which we're going to see here in just a second. And they actually had the decision to make two magic carpets here. They could have stopped the first carpet right about where the tunnel is and then make another carpet kind of on the other side of that trail break. But they decided they wanted to spend the extra money, get a uh, concrete bridge to go over the top and obviously have a fiberglass tunnel to go over the top. So uh, really cool, really unique. It is long, I will say. This is a very long lift. And, uh, you know, depending on if there's any stoppages, probably about three and a half to four minute ride length. So for newer skiers, if they don't have the patience just yet, use the smaller carpet, which is located on the left. Um, but 
overall. This is really cool because if you're scared of chairlifts, if you have a child that's really scared of, of heights, it's a great way to access a really long run without getting on a chairlift. So that's the reason why I love it and beginners tend to love this one because it actually feels like you're skiing a much bigger run than some of the smaller uh, runs that you can typically access from a carpet and you're going to see that this run in just a minute and it's, it's pretty long for a beginner run um, without going on a chairlift. So. So we're gonna actually start, this is a deer run and schoolyard at the bottom. So we're gonna start at the top at deer run. As you can see, just a very mellow pitch, the, basically the mellowest pitch they he have here at Buck Hill. You know, a great learning train, very wide, nothing to kind of run into. And then I think right at the break here is when technically schoolyard starts, right when this is kind of the covered bridge stops. And this is now schoolyard. So nothing really crazy, just a very, you know, generic beginner run. Goes right on down to Buck 54, which is their main kind of uh, food and beverage area. That's cool because they do have a deck um, straight ahead. You can kind of see it on picture there that mom and dad can sit at. If you're watching somebody, it's really cool because you can have a beer, you can have lunch, and you can watch your kids ski. And it's 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 pretty cool layout, actually. Um, we didn't ski the smaller magic carpet that we kind of just went past over there. But you're going to be able to see it on our right when we go up this chair. This is the triple chair. This is a Doppelmayr C-Tech was installed in 2002. And basically right on our left, you're going to see Red Tail Ridge Terrain Park on our left, which is kind of their smaller park. It's a really great one. We'll go and do a POV through that. And then on our right, you're going to see the run that we're going to be skiing, which is called Teacher's Pet, which is kind of the next step up from that um, first run that we just did off of the magic carpet. So usually it goes, you know, start on the magic carpet if you're a beginner, either the smaller one or the bigger one. Um, do that a couple of times, and then once they feel comfortable, you can try out this chair. So this is kind of where the beginners then move on to. This is a great run we're gonna go into in just a minute. But uh, yeah, there, it's, it's, it's a really nice layout because basically for Buck, you know, hard runs are kind of in the middle and then on the outsides on both look, uh, lookers left and lookers right is kind of where the beginner runs are gonna be. So usually everyone starts on the right, makes their way kind of more towards the left and obviously we'll cover all of those once we get off. Uh, fun little fact, this run was actually covered in Nevaplast and they did off uh, season skiing here, but unfortunately that just didn't work out so they're not doing it anymore. Um, so this is Teacher's Pet. This is actually the left side of Teacher's Pet. We're going to do the right side as well. A little bit more of a pitch than the first run that we did, but obviously you can see it's a much more of a beginner terrain, but you know, enough there, enough space. And um, you know, it just gives you a little bit different feel as a beginner, a little bit longer of a run, a little more pitch. And um, you know, it's just a really good step up from that first run that we did, which was deer run to schoolyard. Um, this area of the hill does tend to get congested just because this is where all the beginners go. So just something to keep in mind. On week on weekdays, this is uh, much less crowded, um, but this is uh, a weekend shot here. So honestly, it's not very crowded for a weekend, but it, it does tend to get, see a little more congestion. And then this is uh, teacher's pet, but basically just running on the right side of the trees instead of the left. There are some little like kind of tree areas that you can kind of go up into, as you can see here. Um, Kids love this, you know, go up there and kind of just hit some of these side hits. Cool. So we're skiing right under the chair now. You can kind of see how people kind of gather on this run. And um, yeah, it's a popular one for kind of beginner intermediate skiers. So now we're actually going through Little Jibber. So this is actually located on the kind of other side of the bridge, as you can see. And this is their jibbing terrain park. Uh, it's serviced by a rope, which we're going to ride in just a second. And I've been really impressed with their, um, their park this season. And we're going to ride back up. Uh, this rope is a little bit slower than some that we're used to in the park, just a heads up for those park rats out there. So it does take a little bit longer to lap this one. But I will say this year, this season, They've been uh, resetting about every two so, two or so weeks, and the sets have been really good um, compared to years past. So it's been uh, really fun to see this park kind of develop, especially this past season. And they do have a number of other parks like we kind of saw earlier, but this is kind of their main bread and butter jibbing park. So you know, if you're looking for good quality jibs, this is where you're gonna basically head um, at Buck Hill. And you'll find people lapping here basically all day. There's a couple ways to get here. You can either go to the top of the magic carpet or you can go to the top of the triple chair that we just rode and you can kind of funnel back down. Now we're actually gonna ride the next rope uh, train park, which we kind of saw from the triple chair, which is uh, Red Tail Ridge. And 
we're just going to kind of do a quick lap in, in here so you can see what this looks like. So this is, once again, kind of similar, a very jib-focused terrain park. Um, and this is more of a beginner park though, so they're going to have smaller features and you can kind of see I'm riding through here right now. Very popular park. I would say it's other than Little Jibber, which is very popular as well. This one is definitely right up there, so you're going to see a lot of traffic. And it's right, basically right in front of the ski hill. So you have a lot of boxes, a lot of flat rails, a lot of simple features. You usually have a jump as well, a small jump or hip um, that you can hit, which is great for beginners. Then we're going to ride up their, uh, their quad, which... It's hard to believe that this is a quad. This is a 1978 Hall quad. And just because it's so old, they just made them a little bit smaller back then. And this is kind of their main workhorse lift. You know, this is the one that I ski 90% of the time when I go to Buck Hill because of the runs that you'll see in just a minute here. Um, this lift obviously was built in 1978. It is getting up there in age, and although I can't totally disclose, I know that this one is going to be replaced very, very soon. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge for those of you that watch a lot of my content. Um, but this is kind of their bread and butter uh, chair for this area here. This one's always fun. When you get about to this point of the chair, you can actually look to your right, and on a clear day, you can actually see the Minneapolis skyline, which is really cool. And then if you kind of you know, turn your head even more, you can start to see St. Paul. Obviously today is very cloudy, so not gonna happen today, but just something to keep your eyes open for when you're uh, when you're riding this lift, because some people don't even know that you can see all the way to the skyline, so pretty cool. All right, so the first run that we're gonna do off of this lift is basically just right under the chair, and this is technically called Crossroads. We're kind of going between Crossroads and Milk Run here, and this is one of my favorite lines at the ski area. Um, typically, there are moguls kind of right where I'm skiing right now, which we're gonna I'm gonna show you in some video in just a second, but this has got a really nice pitch. It's relatively consistent. You know, it is marked a black diamond. You know, I wouldn't say it, it's black diamond quality. Obviously, it's probably one of the harder runs at Buck Hill, I would label it more of like a blue square, you know, if you were just coming from a, you know, more advanced skier, but I would say this is one of the tougher pitches that Buck Hill has to offer, but it's very lappable. And then here on screen, you kind of see the mogul course that they set up. This is usually set up around the second or first week of January and then stays until the end of the year. So if you love moguls, by far the best moguls in the Midwest, by far. I mean, it's the longest course, the most consistent, and they just do a great job of setting those and they're, yeah. So definitely ski those if you're a big mogul guy. That's usually what I find myself doing when I go there. So this is on Milk Run, which is kind of uh, to the uh, skier's left of that chair. And this is very similar pitch. Now the only difference between Milk Run and Crossroads, Crossroads is a pretty consistent all the way down. Milk Run has almost a little dip when you get about halfway down about here. It almost looks like a little bowl and it's sometimes depending on how much snow they blow, it's hard to see, but there is kind of a little like indentation right where I'm at right now and then it kind of goes down. So the train's pretty similar, but it is varied a little bit. So it's always kind of fun to mix your turns between that and in Crossroads. I always like seeing that fence line, first of all, for visibility, but then also because the snow typically gets pushed over to that corner. So it's really, really nice to ski skiers left. So this run here, here we're going kind of off the back and to the right, off of the quad, and this is actually called, called uh, Red Tail Ridge, and this meets up with the terrain park. So we're not going to probably ski all the way down through the terrain park, but this is the top section of the terrain park. So you can kind of see we're entering the terrain park right here. It's a really short kind of run that just kind of connects you to Red Tail Ridge. And then if you go off of the back and go to the left, we're off of the uh, hall quad, we're gonna go to some, a run called Mouse Pass. And this is a very long run, it's pretty flat, but beginners uh, you know, that are going onto the quad, this is the easiest way to basically get down. You go off left, and then we're gonna take a very sharp right past the pump house, past the uh, water tower. And you're gonna see I'm probably gonna have to skate a little bit here but this is a really fun run for beginners, for children. They do have some side hits along the way on this run, as you can, you'll be able to see in just a minute here on my right. So it's always a fun one. And this is a good way, you know, if you don't want to take milk run and want to get back to the chalet after skiing over on the, um, the south side of the hill, this is the best way to do it, basically. Because uh, you're not taking uh, Red Tail Ridge right into the train park. Rather, it's going to kind of shoot you back out over to Teacher's Pet. Um, so it's a better way to kind of get back over to the bar. So. It's a little narrow in here, but some good turns. And then as you can see, it puts us right back onto the teacher's pet, the right teacher's pet side that we kind of ski a little bit earlier. And then I'm gonna go up probably into these trees because 
why not? And we're gonna go down. So this is a great way after you end the day to kind of, you know, end the day on the south side, which we'll ski in just a minute to kind of go back down um, and get back to the chalet. So yeah, and then we're just gonna kind of ski this one out and maybe go in for some drinks at the Buck 54 Bar and Grill. So this is actually all the way on the south. This is their most southern chairlift. This is uh, their newest chair as well, 2006 Doppelmayr SeaTac Quad. And um, you know, if you're looking at the map, it's all the way at the left-hand side. And this is kind of the next step, typically, that people, beginners, like to ski. They'll usually ski the right side, then come over here. Uh, on my right, you can see the race hill. And this is actually called Olympic Dreams. And the rope toe on there is called, um, it's named after Lindsey Vaughn. It's Kildo, Kildo's Climb, I believe. And that's where all of the Buck Hill racing team action is done. Just so you know, we didn't get the ski because there was training going on, but when there isn't training, that is open to the public. And a lot of people don't realize that. And it skis really well. And if there's powder, sometimes it gets untouched because I don't know, like people just don't go there sometimes. So just something to keep in mind. One thing I do want to point about this chair, this tower that we're going over right now is really high. It's probably like 30 something feet in the air because there's a little ravine there. So if you have kids that are a little scared of heights, this chair might be a little scary to put them on at first, so maybe work your way up there or just let them know that there might be a little bit of a height. But it's really short. It's only for maybe 20 feet of le run length, and then kind of evens back out. So the first one we're going to do is off of to the uh, left here, and this is Rail Yard. You can see the big railroad sign up here. This used to be their terrain park, and I'm actually super happy to say that they did bring back the jump line here, although they don't have a full park here. It's uh, the jump line is back, so we're gonna have some footage of that. But this has got a little bit more of a consistent pitch, a little bit steeper than something like the beginner runs, but not quite as steep as Milk Run. So this is kind of like the next step after you do Teacher's Pet um, and Mouse Pass and Red Tail. This is kind of where you would go, and I like it because it wraps around. It's kind of a big dog leg, and it's a really fun little run. And then basically we're gonna get shot out into the knob, which at this point doesn't really have a lot of features on it. It's kind of more to our right. You can see the rope toe there but it is now a train park and also accesses the half pipe as well. So I'll put some drone footage of that in just a second here so you can kind of see what that looks like. We're gonna go back up and then this one is Warner's Way. This is uh, my wife's favorite run. It's got a little bit more pitch off of the, right off the very top. So it has right away, you're gonna get some really solid turns, then it kind of flattens back out to more of that, like um, the pitch that you're gonna see on something like rail yard. So it's a good mixture. This is a really good next step after you do rail yard a couple times because you get a couple of steeper turns in, but you don't have a ton of them. So you only have one or two turns that are steep and then the rest of them are more mellow. So it gives you more of that time rather than milk run, which is more consistent or crossroads where it's more consistent and there's less run out. That's a great next step. And then I want to go over some runs that we did not ski here. Um, we obviously talked about Olympic Dreams, which is the race course. That has a really consistent pitch similar to Crossroads. It's, it even kind of continues down a little bit further than Crossroads. So it has a little bit more to ski. Um, I love skiing it, if possible. Um, super excited for some things that they have planned down the line with some new lifts that will make that run a little bit easier to access. We didn't talk about the half pipe. They do cut the half pipe usually around the first or second week of January as well. I do have some footage that I'm going to put over screen right now, and that's definitely a, a huge hit. It's the only, currently, it's the only pipe in the Midwest. Sometimes Nubs has one or a couple other places, but uh, Buck Hill always has it. Every year they cut it, they're always committed to it. It's going to stay around for a while. And it's rope, it has its own rope tail, which is amazing. Um, it wasn't open when we were there, so unfortunately we weren't able to ride it. But there's, I mean, it's the, one of the few, I mean, there might be like one or two others that, that have dedicated lifts for their, for their um, half pipe. So that's super cool. And then the knob, which we talked about, is kind of a, a mini terrain park off of that same rope toe. And they've done a great job of putting a jump there that's, you know, easily lappable with the rope and a bunch of other features as well. And then they did bring back the double jump line on rail yard towards the bottom, which will put some drone footage of that. I think this is a great spot for it. We need They needed a little more space. They've been kind of toying around with where the jump line should go over the past few years. And this is the place. I mean, we didn't also hit off of Olympic Dreams. We did not hit Siler's Shoot. So this is um, named after Eric Siler, the legendary ski coach of the Buck Hill Racing Team who taught, you know, Lindsey Vaughn and Christina Kosnick. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit of an offshoot off of Olympic Dreams. And then there is another shoot. I don't know if it's labeled. Oh, yep, number 12. So that would be woodchuck way it kind of goes around the back towards deer run you know not open very often and honestly it's super flat it's more of a logistics 
sort of run. And 13 is also marked on here as well, which is Coyote Cutoff. Once again, I don't even know if they're actually groom this run or even like put snow on it. It's labeled, but uh, I don't even know. It's skiable, like if you wanted to, but um, you know, it's it's really not a real run. And that is pretty much it for Buck Hill. I will say I really enjoy Buck Hill for what it is. They do a great job of creating something for everybody there, whether it's moguls, half pipe, terrain park, race scene. I mean, they they literally every inch of this hill is used for something for somebody. And I think that's great. And I think it's really unique. Is it a place that you're going to spend all day? Probably not. But it's a place that is ex extremely accessible, especially since it's right off of 35. It's quick, it's easy, and they actually have some products that feed right into that. So they have that night option, that early bird option. I mean, it's one of those places that you could go ski for two, three hours, feel really good, go back home, have a full day, you know, and, and just get your laps in. That's usually how I ski Buck Hill. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed skiing along with me at Buck Hill, but until next time, I hope all of you have a great week, pray for snow, and I hope to ski along with you soon.